come back. You can bet. Our scripture lesson will be 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Beginning at the first verse. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. All right. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. All right. Verse 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them overcome. because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Our subject is something in me. Something in me. Hyphen. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. As John did in his writings in the gospel, he does here. He states with clarity the purpose of his letter. Mm -hmm. He proclaims the good news about Jesus. Saying in chapter 1, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Later John goes on and says, he's writing so that you may not sin. And here, so that you can be able to distinguish truth from error, so that you may not be led astray. All right. And John continues to write and says, so that you may know that your faith is sure that you have eternal life. John wanted his readers to experience true fellowship with God All right. and with God's people. But he knew that would not happen until they set aside their own desires mm -hmm. in favor of God's purpose for them. To help them attain that goal, John focused on three issues. The zeal, the passion of the believer. Standing firm against false teaching. And reassuring each and every one that as a believer you have eternal life. Yes. John wrote to churches full of people who struggled with discouragement. Whether due to their own failures or the presence of false teachers in their midst or their wicked society that surrounded them. All right. So the aging apostle hoped to ignite zeal of these believers so that they might follow Jesus more closely and stand firm against those who meant to sow discord among the churches. But John's quandary is how to get the people to understand and make the transition from an external Jesus who was with us out there All right. but now has ascended into heaven All right. and how this transition is that even though he is in heaven he sent the Holy Spirit to live in you. In 
And he wants them to grow in this relationship until it becomes great. All right. We need a greater thing inside of us instead of ourselves. For when we have a greatness that is of God in us, oh, it'll help you. It'll help you each and every day for when the Spirit is with you, it'll help you walk away from some situation. Yes. When he is with you, when he's with you, and you want to haul off and hurt somebody, he can hold your peace. And when you want to speak in unsanctioned tongues, <laughs> all right, and give folk a piece of your mind, Come on now. the spirit sneaks in and gives another type of utterance. Yes. We need to know this greatness. Oh, yeah. So John suggests that the dilemma that they were enduring is reflective of a dualistic nature. You are in the world, in the world, but you're not of this world. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. A world where things won't go our way. That's it. A world in where we're underpaid and underappreciated, profiled, and discriminated. A world where we have all kinds of challenges, obstacles, and infirmities. Yes. A world in which we find ourselves not knowing which way to turn, being ridiculed and mocked and ignored and bypassed and abused and beaten and imprisoned and even murdered. But John says even in the midst of the storm. Come on now. We must remember that when we suffer for doing good, God is still expressing his goodness, yes, he his mercy, mercy, and his blessing for you. Yes, sir. Even in the admission of what you're going through, your, your stuff is great. But for some reason, you're still surviving. Oh, yes. The things you're going through is great. Mm -hmm. But there's something inside of you All right. that keeps you going on yeah, and on. That's it. Therefore, I have to admit though I'm going through my current circumstances, John says I want you to realize it's just a test for qualification to prepare you for a greater blessing. Thank you, Lord. The bigger the trial, the bigger the blessing. Yes, sir. And you qualify, and that's why you can tell somebody, I've been going through what I'm going through right now, because it's necessary to prepare me for a bigger blessing in my future. Yes, sir. John continues on, and he says we must come to understand the purpose of the one that is in me. Jesus said, when I go away, I, I, I'm going to send the Comforter, That's right. the Holy Spirit, yes. to guide and teach and be with you. That even though you saw miracles done by my hand in your presence, you'll do greater things than these because I'm going to my Father and I'm going to send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Yeah. Greater. Greater. So if God is in me, mm -hmm. mm, his purpose is now to come and dwell inside of me as the source, the character, the essence of my context so he can show me how to master my situation. Yes. See, the he 
that is in me, context, come on now, my situation becomes the stage in which the context, the construct that God is in me, allows me to declare victory. Mm -hmm. That's important. Victory. Because he said, you have overcome them. Overcome. Overcome who? Overcome what? Whatever is in the world, whatever situation that we find ourselves in, you now have the context, the ability to go greater, higher yes. than your environment, than the folk around you, Speak. than your trials. And so John, John is summing up. He understood that it was something far greater than what I can see in the logical, physical realm. But it, it operated on the anointing of God and the supernatural. Yeah. He understood that there was something in you That's it. that supersedes the desires of the world. You see, the world doesn't care anything about you. No, no. Come on. Matter of fact, not only does it not care, it wants to destroy you. No, it wants to rob you of your purpose. Right. It wants to steal the blessings of God that God has given you. Yeah. It wants you to hide your lamp under a bushel so that your light cannot shine. It wants to twist and uh, manipulate the gospel message so that you cannot hear and know that you have someone greater on the inside. Oh yes, oh yes. Great. Mm. So, I'm just telling somebody this morning. Oh yes. You better stop crying over how great your problems Come on. are because God stands with you, shows up and shows out for you, and your victory is going to be greater yes. if you trust in the one that is in you. Hmm. Yeah. And as our opening scripture declares, the first thing we notice, you are of God, little children. We are of God. He's not talking to everybody. He's not talking to anybody. He is talking to folk that have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on now. That has been saved and redeemed. That trust him as our Lord and Savior. That has been washed in his blood. Yeah. That it was our sins were crucified on the cross. And we rose with him in victory. We are of God, we are little children, yes, sir. and have overcome them. Overcome. Begin to meditate on this until it is so real that nothing can take it from you. The devil wants to steal that from you. He wants to steal your identity. Right. He wants right. to steal your purpose. He wants to steal your blessings from you. Don't give it to him. You need to understand who you are, whose you are. You are a child of God and you have greater purpose, yes, sir. greater identity, greater meaning than what this whole world can give. Come on now, come on. However, we will just begin to realize it and walk in light of it is when we start experiencing victory. God's word tells us that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us in Romans 8 and 11. Yes. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead would also give life to your mortal bodies yes. through his spirit who dwells in you. You thought you were alone. <laughs> Come on now. You, you, you thought they backed you up into a corner. Come on, Pastor. 
You thought your problems have gotten so overwhelmed that you cannot survive. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is the way God allows our faith to manifest the promises of his word in our lives. Secondly, we see that greater is the one who lives within me. This should be the heart cry of every one of us because of the greatness that lives within me, I am victorious. It is because of the great, not because of what I can do, but it's because of the great one that is in me. Yes, yes. That's why you become successful. That's why you can give God glory. That's why you can praise him in spite of sickness or circumstance. When we declare this, we are lining our words up with God's word. We are giving God a place to work in our lives when we speak what he has told us to speak. If you want great things to happen in your life, I suggest you start speaking God's word. You start speaking truth to power. You start speaking truth to power. available. Don't, don't, don't give problems a piece of your mind. That's it. Come on, Pastor. Don't Please. speak in unsanctioned tongues to somebody and tell them what you think. Ooh. You speak thus saith the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. And when you align yourself with the will of God, with the word of God, with the purposes of God, shall be yours. Mm. Lastly, he says, he's telling us, since we have all this, we, we have a privilege. Oh, yes. But not only a privilege, an opportunity to ask for this help. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews says it like this in chapter 4 and 16. Let us therefore boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Does anybody need some mercy today? Oh yeah. Does anybody need God to rain down grace in your life? Then you need to come to the throne of grace. You need to ask the Father as a child asks their parent. Father, give me some grace. Give me your mercy. Oh, he's not going to turn you. Give me, Lord, your love. God wants us to have his help. Yes, he does. We should receive it and begin to walk in it. We must come to realize that he is always with us. He'll never leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. That's it. He says, I'll be with you what always, even until the end of the age. We all face trials. But we can take great comfort in the fact the Holy Spirit of God has taken up residence inside of us. Oh, yeah. He's always a very present help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just when we feel like it, but always. Whether we feel like it or not, God is always there. Always there. Our faith can't even be based on our feelings. My beloved John is trying to get this church and I'm trying to get my church get out of your feelings and into your faith. Yeah. By trusting in what God's word has said and has done in our lives. And we know that regardless
regardless of the circumstances, we have victory on the inside of us. And I guess that's why Paul understood it this way. And we know that all things work together for them to them that love God and to them who are called according to their purpose. Even though I don't understand this society. I don't understand why troubles come. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But what I do know is greater is He that is with me, that is in me, than they that are in the world. When you get to the point to where you can't go on, when you get to the point to where your back is against the wall, that I can't take no more, no matter what, greater, greater is he that is with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Therefore, if my sickness is great, then my healing is going to be greater. If my bills are piled up in great, then my prosperity shall be greater. If my test is great right now, then my shall be greater. If my suffering is great right now, then deliverance shall be greater. So, you tell somebody, I qualify for a bigger, greater blessing. And then I'm coming through because greater is he Hallelujah. that is in me right now. Did y'all get that? Did you understand it? Oh, yeah. Is the Spirit speaking to you right now? Speak Holy Ghost, speak Holy I don't care about no COVID-19 or COVID-20 or COVID-32. I don't care Preach. who's the president when they orange, green, Wars, rumor wars in every country in the world. Greater is he that is in me. And I already won. You won, my beloved. We got the victory. Just hold on and let God do his thing. God bless you. God smile upon you.
Yeah. <laughs>